Notice how the back side, the inside cups in on this side here. He's done good for you because notice how the, the hoof is inside the shoe so that it expands and contracts. It will, the heel will then come out to that shoe. Where he did you not so good is he put six nails in. The problem is, is where that third nail is, is at the quarter. What that's doing is that's holding your hoof on. It's also the weakest part of the hoof. When I shoe any of my mules, even my big draft mules, I put four nails in total. That's all. And I put them up toward the front so that as that hoof comes down, it expands. As the hoof comes up, it contracts. Got that? So with a mule especially, since they got a donkey foot, which is one of the sorriest foot you can get, all right, it, we, we've got to keep track of these feet, okay? Now, I want you to notice here, on, on the right foot, the shoe comes down to, the hoof comes down to the shoe. Notice on the left foot, he blunted it back. Do you see how it's more rounded and blunted back compared to the other one going straight down? Can you see that? Does that make sense to you? Can you see that, ma'am? Look at the two feet here. Oh, look, I see it on how, this foot. Yeah. See how this one's yeah, blunted yeah, down? Yeah, yeah. This one that comes one's more straight. straighter down. Uh -huh. Okay. Little things like that make all the difference in the world when it comes down to ferrying. I tell people all the time, don't let your farrier touch the outside of that hoof wall with that file. That's a natural way to protect that, that horse's foot with the lanolin that's in there. Okay? So I prefer four nails total. That way I get my expansion and contraction where it's needed on the heel. You use the front four? Front, front, front four. And I climb around these rocks now. All right? You know, I climb these rocks and chase a lion and wild cattle and this sort of thing. You're driving on the wagon. This mule here, this wagon here, it's got a Chevy truck undercarriage on it. I hook mule, six mules on the front and I tie six mules on the back and we go out and train all day long. You, you, want to dis, you want to disengage the hip. It's really important. You ever notice how you'll pick up a foot on a horse? You'll pick it up, you'll sometimes pinch him, and this sort of thing, and then you'll go straight back. Not on a mule. You want to disengage that hindquarter, okay? So you put your hand here on the hip, slide your hand down, get a hold of the hawk right here, come forward first. That disengages the hip joint, go straight back, as soon as she relaxes, straight back, as soon as she relaxes, and then over to the left. Now the mule relaxes, he, I can work his feet, everything's fine. But if you pick it up, try to go to the left, they're hopping around trying to get away from you. Bad girl. As you try and work. No wonder she don't do that. It's okay. <laughs> Step around. Well, get to come along and hit you out if you become a problem. My hip, hand on my hip, tells the hip to stay over. Good girl. Now I move over. You know, you never know what goes through their minds. You know? Like you said, Norman, she doesn't do it. The, the farrier has been doing it more like a horse pull up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's trying to get her balance too. So. And, that way, and he takes it out the, straight out. Yeah. All right, come on over here a second. All right, here's your frog. Right here. Notice right off the bat, your shoe is tipped. You see how it's not straight? How do you think that mule is going to try to walk? Perfect. A little tough. All right. So that's one thing. Notice how the the hoof 
how the how your two shoes are here, okay, and they're almost touching the frog on each side. That's because the heels are contracted. They're in. The frog is narrow, and the frog feel it. It's hard. Okay. Now it's got a little bit of spongy to us, but I mean this thing should be a sponge. This should just move pretty easy. So what your shoer's got to do is take the branches here and here, turn them so that this foot comes out and starts getting it shaped up. But again, he's got six nails rather than four. Of course, everybody thinks, oh, get a lot of nails in there. No, 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 no. You know, you're at the weakest part of this hoof, and this part of this hoof can't move out because you got a nail in it holding it. It can't go. Okay, he did you okay in that you got some expansion, but if he went ahead and brought it clear over, your shoe would have been incorrect. Okay, he's got the shoe too far back as well. You see it back here on the edge of the frog. It should be forward some. Okay. Now, and again, blunting off the toes. You see where he took his mm -hmm. file? Yeah. And he blunted off the toes rather than shoot, putting the putting the shoe to the foot. He made the foot to the shoe. You know, so you you when you when you put a shoe on, this should be the shoe. That foot should come down here like this. It shouldn't come like this, y'all. It should come right down. It should fit just like that, just as pretty as can be. A little bit better here, I want you to notice the frog is spongier. The frog is spongier. He's not touching the frog here. A lot spongier. You just, it's amazing the difference in those two. Inside heel is lower than his outside heel as well. Okay? So that's all really important. When you start doing the corrective shearing to this wheel to get the, the contraction out, then that farrier is going to set that foot a whole lot different than what you're doing here. Again, folks, it's not just a matter of putting the shoe on. you got to remember, these guys already have bad legs, you know, because of the donkey side. And so we need to, we need to deal with it.